We now have fewer than 50 days until the 2024 elections. And while the presidential race has naturally grabbed most of the legacy media's attention, polling experts continue to monitor shifting momentum in the races to control both chambers of Congress, which will, be, will greatly uh, affect the fortunes of either presidential candidate. And increasingly, we, we find that the American public likes divided government. And quite frankly, for good reason, because not much happens which usually the only thing that happens up here is bad. Well, abortion referendums are on the ballot in 10 states uh, in November. Pro-life voters, even in states without a close presidential race, have extra motivation to cast their ballots. So turnout is going to be strong in those 10 states. But there are just a handful, maybe two dozen or more congressional races that could decide control of Congress. Joining me now to break these numbers down is Rich Barris. He's director of Big Data Poll. Rich, welcome to Washington Watch. Thanks for having me. It's good to be with you. So, Rich, you anticipate razor thin results across the board. What are you looking at down ballot in House and Senate races right now? Yeah, we have an interesting environment, uh, Tony, because usually, you know, looking back in the modern era, really since the Obama era, we really, for the U.S. Senate, have not seen a lot of ticket splitting during presidential cycles. You have Susan Collins, and that's about it when you look at a candidate for U.S. Senate from one party that won their election when the other party's candidate for president carried the state. So typically, we, we have not seen this kind of ticket splitting that the polls suggest uh, really is is what we, is coming. Uh, I'm not sure that will last. That's something we're looking at. We just started to add what is called leaning to down ballot races as well. So we always ask undecided voters uh, for president. Well, if you had to decide today, who is who's it going to be? Um, and Democrats maintain a slight edge on our, on our generic ballot for the House and Senate by Senate. It really does go, you know, depending on the state we're talking about. Uh, but generally speaking, Republican candidates are running a couple of points behind Donald Trump. And that's been the case in our polling for about a year. We'll see if that changes. So when you talk about the ticket splitting, do you see that trend where uh, people may vote for, let's say, Kamala Harris in the presidential, but a Republican in a congressional and maybe state legislative race and vice versa? And vice versa. We, we do. And but it is it's worth pointing out that we did see that in 16 as well. So uh, Kelly Ayotte, for instance, for U.S. Senate looked like she was going to perform better than Donald Trump in, the, at, uh, in New Hampshire. And it actually, they both wound up losing the state. But it, it was the flip side. So each individual state or when we're talking about districts, you know, it really gets very granular about who these people are and, you know, different cultures we have around the country. Um, but we are seeing it in the polls. And we have seen this before, Tony, and that's the thing. At the end of the day, when we get close to the election, partisans do usually come home. So we haven't seen a lot of it actually materialize in the vote. In midterms, yes. But during presidential cycles, no. So this is interesting to watch. Rich, what are you seeing in terms of intensity? Is there an intensity yeah. differential out there right now? This is this is another. Of course, this matters is another huge, important question. Uh, Democrats were basically asleep or hiding under a rock for months after the debate uh, with Joe Biden, where he just collapsed on on camera. Uh, they all but vanished. They were very difficult to poll. Those we did speak to said they were not enthusiastic at all. And Republicans had an edge in enthusiasm for about a year. They uh, in the first poll we did after Harris became the nominee, that really came to parity. So certainty to vote, enthusiasm. It was basically they were mir the two parties were mirroring each other. Partisans were mirroring each other. Uh, this last poll that we and we sent to you, you know, that was released at the end of last week. Republicans retook a slight advantage, but it is slight. This will be it looks looks to us like it's going to be a high turnout election and it's going to be close. So let's talk Every about that. Let's talk about that closeness, because, you know, we saw in, uh, you know, 2022, there was these predictions of a red wave. But th there's no water out there to create a wave. I mean, we, we see a very, very narrowly divided country. And what I see from your numbers is that this thing is going to go one way or the other just by a handful of congressional seats. This is uh, if, if it's happened before, uh, it, it's 
out of my memory. It happened so long ago that it's out of my memory. But as you can see, when you when you include leaners, it was 50 50. That's how close it was. Uh, that almost ne that has almost never happened to me in my career. Uh, but yeah, in in the house, this will come down. You know, you're looking at 30, a little over 30 seats that people really do believe are contested and 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 up for grabs in a presidential cycle. It even reduces the the possibility of a wave even more because most uh, most elections, both sides are juiced and they're ready. You know, they're ready to turn out uh, in a midterm. You can have that differential be much much greater in a, uh, with one party over the other. But this is not going to happen this time. This is going to be close, and you're going to fight for every vote. So that means for voters, their vote counts, especially when you look at these uh, 32 races, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Minnesota, Michigan, Nebraska, North Carolina, Ohio, I mean, pr pr Pennsylvania, Texas, uh, Virginia, there, there's a key race in almost every one of these states. Those voters, I mean, this could come down to a handful of votes in a congressional district that could determine the control of the United States House of Representatives and, in some cases, the Senate. These races are close. In the off cycle in Louisiana last year, uh, of course, everybody paid attention to the gubernatorial election. And of course, that matters. But down ballot, there were some contested ballots. A judge wound up throwing out a few of them. And in one race, uh, it was one vote that decided uh, the outcome, the winner of that race. Your vote absolutely does matter now more than ever. This this country is split, you know, down the middle. It really is. Um, and it, and often it really isn't about persuasion. It's about turnout. Right. It's just the era we live in now, Tony. So right. it's that much more important that you have to get out and you have to vote. You have to get five friends to go out and vote and uh, do your part. And and that's the, the side that does that more and wants it more is the side that's going to win. Yeah. And that's why that intensity enthusiasm is so important. And we got to generate that ourselves, understanding that our lives are affected by the policies of those that we elect and put in place. Rich, thanks so much for joining us. Very interesting conversation. I'm sure we're going to check in with you some more over the next 50 days. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. All, All the right. best. Thanks, Rich.